Hi viewers, welcome back. A very warm welcome from a vision and a traffic control key dedicating yourself YouTube channel. This lecture is about a traffic control service. It is a service which is provided for the purpose of preventing collisions between aircraft and on the maneuvering area between aircraft and obstructions and for expediting and maintaining an orderly flow of air traffic. Air traffic control service shall be provided to all IFR flights in A space class A, B, C, D and E. Class F is advisory A space and class G is flight information service A space. A traffic control services shall also be provided to all VFR flights which are operating between classes B, C and D. In class A space, VFR flights are not permitted. Air traffic control services shall also be provided to all special VFR flights and to all aerodrome traffic at controlled aerodromes. It has to be provided with the help of three units. First is area control service. Second is approach control service and third is aerodrome control service. So area control services is provided by area control center or with the unit which is providing approach control service. Approach control service has to be provided by aerodrome control tower or area control center or it can be provided by an unit which is providing approach control unit. Aerodrome control service is provided by an aerodrome control tower. Operation of air traffic control service. In order to provide air traffic control service, an air traffic control unit shall be provided with the information on the intended movement of each aircraft or variation therefrom and with the current information on the actual progress of each aircraft. So it means that they should have flight plan, they should have estimates and they, ha they should also have any changes like level changes, or estimate changes then only they will be able to provide air traffic control services to the known traffic then a traffic control unit shall determine from the information received the relative positions of known aircraft to each other they should issue clearances and information for the purpose of which is the objective preventing collision between aircraft under its control and for expediting and maintaining an orderly flow of air traffic they have to coordinate clearances as necessary with other units whenever an aircraft might otherwise conflict with traffic operated under the control of such other units or before transferring control of aircraft to such other units. Clearances issued by a traffic control unit shall provide separation between all flights in a space class A and B between IFR flights which are operating in classes C, D and E, between IFR and VFR flights operating in A space class C, between IFR flights and special VFR flights and between special VFR flights. There are three types of separation minima, vertical separation minima, horizontal separation minima and composite separation minima. Composite separation minima is a mix of vertical and horizontal separation. We have a complete tutorial on separation minima. You can uh, view that one for uh, reference. Responsibility for control of individual flight rest with one A traffic control unit at any given time. There will not be two controllers who will be handling a particular single control flight. Responsibility for control within a given block of A space, it will lies with only a single air traffic control unit. So a single control unit may be handling 25, 30, 35 air, uh, air movements at a particular time. Transfer of responsibility for control based upon place or time of transfer. Between a unit providing an airdrome control tower and approach control service departing aircraft. When visual meteorological conditions prevail in the vicinity of the aerodrome, aerodrome control tower will release the aircraft or departing aircraft to approach control unit prior to the time the aircraft leaves the vicinity of aerodrome or prior to the aircraft entering instrument meteorological conditions 
or at any given point or time which is specified in letter of agreement or which is specified in the a traffic service unit instructions these are the local instructions so when instrument meteorological conditions prevails at the aerodrome the aerodrome control tower immediately transfer the control of the departing aircraft once it is airborne to the approach unit or if they have any agreement letter of agreement they have specified a place of time or transfer like passing 3000 feet passing 2000 feet or passing 7000 feet they can release it to approach control unit so they will do it like that or otherwise they will release immediately after the airborne now transfer of responsibility for control between two units providing area control service so the responsibility for control of an aircraft shall be transferred at a specific time which is based upon the crossing of the common control area boundary or at such other point or time which has been agreed between the two units so normally in this case they used to find out the estimate of a common fir boundary crossing point and at that particular time or place they used to transfer the control of that aircraft to the next unit area control unit transfer of responsibility from for control between a unit providing area control service to a unit providing terminal control or approach control service so in this case it will be based upon a particular point of time which is agreed between the two units so suppose terminal controller is having a responsibility of 50 nautical mile and from ground to flight level 150 so once the aircraft passes flight level 155 and it is agreed that once it passes flight level 155 it has to be released to the terminal controller so that is the vertical point at which they will be going to release the aircraft and the other jurisdiction is lateral limits which is 50 nautical mile so they can define it in lateral limits also if once aircraft enters 50 nautical mile and if it is at particular 155 passing flight level 155 so it can be released now transfer of responsibility from control from terminal controller to the tower controller this is for the arriving aircraft which is about to be uh, going for landing so when the aircraft is in the vicinity of aerodrome and it is considered that approach and landing will be completed in visual reference with the ground it has to be released to the aerodrome control tower or if suppose the aircraft has reached uninterrupted vmc conditions so it will be released to the aerodrome control tower or as per letter of agreement or as specified in a traffic service unit instructions a point or level that time the terminal controller will release this arriving aircraft to the tower controller or in other case a after landing once the arriving aircraft has landed then only it will be released to the aerodrome control tower coordination of transfer responsibility for control of an aircraft shall not be transferred from one air traffic control unit to another without the consent of the accepting control unit so in this case there are two control areas control area number one and control area number two an aircraft is flying from control area number one to control area number two so the aircraft is in control of the control area number one and that unit is known as transferring unit so that transferring control unit has to obtain consent from the control area number two which is the accepting control unit so first the control will be with first controller which is the transferring unit and thereafter after crossing the fir boundary or a common point or time agreed between these two units this control of aircraft will be by with accepting control unit then the second point says like this the transferring control unit has to communicate the current flight plan like what is the level estimate or any other control information related to that particular flight which is necessary which is important for the accepting control unit has to be coordinated thereafter third point the accepting control unit shall indicates its ability to accept the control of aircraft on the terms specified by the transferring control unit so certain terms have been specified by transferring control unit for instance uh, transferring control unit may apply mac number technique to separate two aircraft then he can say like this to maintain a particular rate of flying 
or he can say like this cross this particular uh, way point at or before or later and he will tell all this information to the accepting control unit accepting control unit will check the traffic in its control area and if it is feasible for him that he can apply he can maintain the separation then he will accept the conditions which have been already been specified by the transferring control unit to the aircraft otherwise the accepting control unit shall specify other information or clearances for a subsequent portion of the flight which the accepting control unit requires the aircraft to have at the time of transfer the fourth point says the accepting control unit shall notify the transferring control unit when it has established the two way voice communication or data link communication with the released aircraft and assume control of the aircraft concern or otherwise if they have a letter of agreement they need not to coordinate this particular thing that aircraft is in now my contact and i am controlling it fifth point says applicable coordination procedures including at which particular point which is known as transfer of control point these all should be specified in letter of agreement and they should be uh, available to the concerned air traffic service units so that they can apply this in their day to day services content of air traffic control clearances air traffic control clearances shall indicate first aircraft identification it is available in the flight plan clearance limit route of the flight level or any other necessary information or information matters such as approach or departure maneuvers communications and the time of expiry of the clearance so this is for example cathay 123 clear to paris so clearance limit is paris via flight plan route so whatever route have been mentioned in the flight plan that is the route of the flight flight level 320 after departure turn right to intercept or proceed direct to waypoint so these are the form of control clearances now coordination of clearances as we know it's a very dynamic situation that aircraft will depart from one airport and it will land at the destination airport and in between there will be various uh, units like first tower controller thereafter terminal controller then in route controller 1 2 3 whatever they have there after again terminal controller near the destination airport then the tower controller so an aircraft shall be cleared for the entire route to the airdrome of first intended landing when it has been possible prior to departure to coordinate the clearance between all the units under whose control the aircraft will come so it is not like this that aircraft will be holding in the terminal control area number 1 which is near the departing aircraft and they will be going to obtain the clearance from the in route controller so once in route controller will give the clearance then only terminal controller will be going to release the in route it will it will take lot of time and lot of fuel will be wasted and air space is very limited there will be crowd in a particular air space they will be waiting for further in uh, further outbound clearances so to avoid all this thing whenever it is possible before departure the entire route clearance will be coordinated by the ats units and when it is not possible but when there is a reasonable assurance that prior coordination will be effected between those unit under whose control the aircraft will subsequently come for instance tower controller has coordinated with terminal controller and he has released uh, he has uh, given the take off clearance and released the aircraft to the terminal controller of the departure destiny uh, of the departure or uh, departure place thereafter it is understood or it is uh, Uh, they have the assurance that they before releasing it to the in route controller they will coordinate all the contents and clearances or conditions so in this case the aircraft will not be uh, going to hold near the terminal control area near the departure station so it will be released directly to the in route controller and coordination prior coordination will be effected it's not necessary that the tower controller of the departure aerodrome has to coordinate with all next 5 6 units it will be done by next unit next unit will uh, coordinate with the subsequent unit and so on but they will make sure that this information will be available to the next control unit before releasing the aircraft to the next control unit